In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of making a custom sketch shader in Blender, from making the textures, setting up a custom node group, and also showing you how to get sketchy outlines using the grease pencil. If you don't feel like watching the video, you can go and download my version of the sketch shader on Gumroad. It has a bunch of different shading styles, different paper textures, and some more advanced controls, but if you follow along with the video, you should be able to adapt the different techniques to make your own sketch shader. To start off, we need to make a seamless, sketchy texture. You can download one of mine, you'll find the link in the description, or you can create your own using a program called Krita. A drawing tablet will make drawing the sketchy textures easier, but it's not really necessary. In Krita, we can create a new document and make it 1024 by 1024. Select whatever brush you want, I like the large 4B pencil, and start drawing. We want this texture to tile, and the way to do that is by enabling Wraparound Mode by pressing Shift W. Now you should see that your texture tiles. We want to make this seamless, so zoom out with the scroll wheel until your screen is full of grid squares. We're going to make two versions of our texture, and this is going to be the light version, so paint in some lines, making sure to leave some white space. Now all we have to do is paint until you no longer see the individual squares. This process takes a bit of time, and if you find that some areas are too dark, you can press E, which enables the eraser, and you can remove some lines. Once you're finished, you should have some kind of sketchy texture that looks like this. You can export this as a PNG, and now we can continue drawing and make the dark version of the texture. Just paint over what you've done already, this time trying to fill in as much of the white space as possible. Once that's done, you can export it, and now you'll have two textures, a light version and a dark version. In Blender, I'm going to set up a very simple scene with Suzanne, a sphere, a ground plane, and a sun lamp. That's all we need for this. Now we can create a material and assign it to all of our objects. Open up the shader editor, and to start off, we can delete the principal shader and add a diffuse shader. Now add a shader to RGB node, which will turn our shader into color information, which we can manipulate. We can now add in a color ramp node and turn up the black input. Wherever the object is black is where our lighter texture will be. So we can plug the color ramp into the factor of a mixed color node, and we can drag and drop our light texture into Blender and plug that into the A input and change the bottom input to white. This doesn't look too bad, but to really give it that sketchy feel, we want to make sure that all of the sketch lines are facing the same direction, and we can do this with the Texture Coordinate node. Make sure that the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled, as this gives us some nice tools for shader editing. And now if you select your sketch texture and press Ctrl T, it will add a Texture Coordinate node and Mapping node. Texture coordinates allow us to change how a texture is mapped. You'll mostly use UV mapping, but for this we want to use Window Mapping. This turns the whole viewport window into the mapping range for the texture, so our seamless texture will tile across the whole screen. You can change the scale X and Y to change the scale of the texture. Now we just need to repeat the same color ramp process for our darker texture. Duplicate the color ramp node, making sure to connect it to the shaded RGB node, and this time the black input will be a bit further back, because we want to blend from our darkest texture to the light texture, then to white. To preview the node, we can Control shift click it, and this will automatically connect it to the material output. So this time, drag in your dark texture, and we can connect the mapping node to the vector. This will just make sure that both of our textures are mapped the same way. Now plug the color ramp into the factor of another mix node, plug the dark texture into the A input again, but instead of white on the bottom, we can plug in the result of the first mix color node. And there you go, that is the basic setup for a custom shader. Now you can rotate the sun around and see the effect it has. Feel free to play around with the color ramp values until your shading blends nicely. We're not finished though, I think it's time to add some color to our scene, and we can do this pretty easily. At the moment, we basically have a black and white image, so we can use this as the factor of one final mixed color node. A is black, and B is white, so whatever color you have in the top input will be your sketch color. You can plug a texture into this if you like, but that's the basic setup for a color sketch shader. This whole setup works, but it's not very user-friendly, and it's a bit messy, so we can turn this into a custom node group with sliders and options that allow us to easily change the color in all of the different settings. Select all of the nodes excluding the material output and press Ctrl G. This will create a node group. Your window will change, but if we press Tab, you'll go back to the regular node view and pressing Tab again will bring you into the group. All we need to do now is connect the empty group input sockets into any values that we want to control. So let's start off with color. We can duplicate the group input node with Shift D and move it beside the mixed color node now just connect the empty socket to the color socket. By default, it will give it the name and type of whatever you plug it into, so in this case, it's now a color input, and it's called A. We can change this in the Properties panel on the right by going to the Group tab at the top of the window. Now you can rename it to Color. Let's add some more inputs for the scale and rotation. 
All you have to do is drag an empty socket to the rotation and scale of the mapping node. Now if we tab back to our regular shading window, we can see that we have a color input and our two vectors. I would prefer if the rotation was a single value. We don't need to change the three of them. We only ever need to change the Z rotation. So let's tab back into the node group and in the group properties, change the rotation from a vector to float. We can also change the subtype to angle and this will show us the slider in degrees. So now the rotation is a single value, but it's a single value that's being passed into the X, Y, and Z of the rotation, which we don't want. We only want to control the Z rotation. We can add a combined X, Y, Z node, which takes three float values and combines them into a vector. So for rotation, we want to leave X and Y at zero and plug the rotation into the Z input. Now, if we tab back to the main shader window, we can see that we have a single rotation control and changing it will rotate the texture. I'm going to introduce you to one more pretty important part of custom node groups, and that's the map range node. At the moment, we have color ramps controlling the position of our shadows, but there's really no way to control this externally. If we ever wanted to move the shadow, we would have to go back into the node group and move the black input of the color ramps. And also that would change the shadows for every material, not just the one that you're working on. That's where the map range node comes in. It's essentially the same thing as the color ramp, but instead of colors, we're dealing with values and we can use the group input to control these values. Let's add a map range node and plug the shader to RGB into the value. With Node Wrangler enabled, we can control shift click to preview the node. So let's go back and forth between the color ramp and map range, trying to match them. You'll need to change the two min value to increase the black amount and just keep going back and forth until they match. Once they do, we can plug the map range into the factor of the mix node replacing the color ramp. Now we can connect our empty group input node into the two min value, and we can rename this midtone position. Now if we tab back out to the main window, we can change this new value and we can change the position of the midtones. Now just repeat this same process for the other color ramp. Add your map range node and play with the two min value until it matches the color ramp. Once they match, plug an empty socket into the two min and rename it shadow position. Now tap back out and you'll have your very own custom sketch shader. You can rename it from node group to sketch shader and click the shield icon so that it stays loaded in Blender. If you still see a temp result node, you can just shift click the node group and it will get rid of it. That's just how Node Wrangler previews the nodes. You can take this further if you'd like by renaming things, giving them nice default values, adding min and max ranges for them, or adding descriptions to them so that when you hover over them, it will give you a tooltip. This is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to custom node groups. There's so many things you can do. Maybe try adding a third shadow texture or some procedural noise or ambient occlusion controls. I think I've given you enough to go on and you should be able to add your own custom features and controls to the node group. We have the shading now, but we want to give the scene some line art and we can do this with the grease pencil. All we have to do is add the grease pencil scene line art object and that will create the basic line art for us. Make sure that you have a camera in your scene as grease pencil line art is only visible through the camera. We can change how these lines look by adding modifiers the same as any other object, but the modifiers are specific to grease pencil. Let's start off by adding the noise modifier. All we really need to change here is the position and that controls how intense the noise is. You can also add some opacity and thickness randomness by increasing strength and thickness. You can also change the noise scale to change how sharp or smooth the noise is. Lastly, let's adjust the thickness of the lines with the thickness modifier. Enable uniform thickness, also enable the custom curve option and make a curve that looks something like this. All this means is that the start and ends of the lines will be thin and the middle will be thick. You can play with the thickness or the curve settings to find something you like. The thickness modifier overrides the line art modifier, so that's how you can change the thickness of the lines. You can also change the color of the grease pencil lines using the materials tab, like any other material. If you want to see some other ways to make line art and to hear a more in-depth explanation of the grease pencil, you can check out my line art video where I explain pretty much everything. The last thing to do is to give this a paper background because the plain white looks very fake. We can do this with compositing. Open up the compositing tab and if you don't see anything, you can render your scene again and make sure that use nodes is enabled at the top of the screen. Then you can control shift click and this will add the viewer node for you. You can download any type of paper texture or even take a picture of one or scan it in yourself, but you'll find a link to a couple of my ones in the description. They're all seamless, so you'll be able to scale them and tile them without any seams. Just drag one of the paper textures directly into the compositor. You can add a translate node and set the wrapping to both axes and add a scale node to scale the texture. Now all we need to do is add a mix color node, set it to multiply and plug the render image into the top input and the paper texture into the bottom input. Now you should have a pretty convincing render 
with a nice paper texture and your own custom sketch shader. One cool new feature in Blender 4.0 is the Viewport Compositor. So in the viewport at the top of the screen, we can click the drop-down arrow beside the shading options and enable Camera Compositing. This will allow us to see our paper texture and any other compositing nodes in real time in the viewport. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you want to go and check out my version of the sketch shader, I've included some more advanced controls, multiple different sketch styles, and tons of different paper textures. You can find it over in Gumroad, the link's in the description. But hopefully now you have an understanding of how to create your own custom shaders, as well as creating nice node groups that make them easy to use. So I hope you learned something from the video, and thanks for watching.